The West Puget Community Connection Podcast. This is where we learn about the people of our community. We learn what they do, and more importantly, why they do it. Subscribe by email at westpugetcommunityconnection.com. We look forward to learning more about you. If you need someone dependable to set up or update your website, manage your social media and marketing, produce videos, produce audio, or if you need help writing and publishing, then I'd like to ask you to consult with me. Hi, I'm Vincent Alexander, and I'm a creative consultant. I live in Port Townsend, Washington. I love fishing, agate hunting, and my girlfriend. I do this kind of work because I love being creative, I love to help make people's dreams come true, and I can do a lot of this work remotely from anywhere, so I can travel with my girlfriend, visit my family in California, and enjoy the great outdoors. Let's talk websites. I've been building websites since 1999. I can work with almost any platform, WordPress, Squarespace, you name it. If you need a new website set up, or a webmaster to help you maintain and update an old website, Vincent Alexander is your guy. Let's talk social media and search engine marketing. I've been nailing top positions on Google since 1999, and I know how to help you do the same. If you need help managing your social media marketing like Facebook ads, YouTube videos, Instagram, I can help with that too. Let's talk video production. Maybe you want to make a video commercial for your business, or maybe you'll hire me to video your band performing your next show, or to produce a music video for your band, or your book release party, or graduation ceremony, or welcome video for your website or video for your comedy group, or fishing videos, or real estate marketing videos. How about a demonstration or how-to video? Or whatever kind of video you want to produce, I can help. Let's talk audio production. Want to start your own podcast? Produce an audiobook? How about interviewing family members to record family history or an autobiography? Or maybe you want to record some music I can set up some microphones, I can produce sounds, I can use stock sound clips to produce professional sounding audio. Let's talk writing. Need help writing a book, a song, a story, a poem? I can help with your creative process. And when it comes time to publish your book, music, or other media on Amazon, Apple iBooks, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, etc., I can help with that too. So if you're a creative go-getter or your organization needs one on their team, fill out the contact form at vincentchiafalo.com right now or call 360-390-5293 or email me vincent at vincentchiafalo.com. Then I will contact you for a free discovery call where we'll discuss your needs in detail. Then I'll provide a proposal and client agreement. And once you agree, we can get to work at my hourly rate of 25 to 55 per hour, depending on the task I'm performing. I keep a careful log of every minute I spend working on your project and what I did during that time. I'll invoice you periodically by email, and you can pay via debit or credit through PayPal, or pay me by check or cash, whichever you prefer. There's no binding contract, so you can work with me as much or as little as you want without any strings attached. So go now to vincentchiafalo.com and fill out the contact form. I look forward to helping you with all of your creative projects. Welcome to the West Puget Community Connection podcast, where we learn about the people in our community, what they do, and more importantly, why they do it. Our mission is to stimulate community engagement by creating a sense of community and rapport. We do that through interviews and storytelling with locals. You can listen to the podcast for free with unlimited streaming on our homepage at westpugetcommunityconnection.com. Contact us if you're interested in advertising or being featured on the show. And now, without further ado, we bring you this episode of the West Puget Community Connection Podcast. Good morning, Eva Talaco. How are you? 
Good morning, Vincent. I'm very well. <laughs> Great. Good yeah. to hear. I missed a beautiful day, and uh, I'm I'm well. <laughs> Well, thank you for your willingness and your desire to participate on the podcast. Um, you have sent me a bio with uh, about four or five paragraphs and came, gave me kind of a breakdown of, of where you come from and sort of your life story. And I'd like to hear you tell the story. So I understand mm -hmm. um, it begins in Czechoslovakia. Communist yeah. Czechoslovakia. Yeah, I, I grew up in communist Czechoslovakia, and uh, I was uh, always connected to nature and uh, art. I loved art. I, I loved beauty, um, and I believe that the health and beauty goes together. It's kind of when people follow the natural life, natural uh, laws. Um, they are healthy, <laughs> or huh. there is always an uh, answer to health um, in the nature and uh, in beauty. <laughs> um, uh, I, uh, um, I was uh, making art since I could hold a pencil. And my mom was pediatric nurse, and she saw the kind of capability, and she put me in art school when I, I was five years old before I went to regular school. So I heard you say that you were making cards from the time you could hold a pencil and then your mom put you in art school when you were five. Is that right? Oh, that's my accent probably. I was making art. Uh, I was drawing and um, I was oh. sculpting with just regular clay. I, I got in... My, ma my parents had, had vineyards and when I was a small child, uh, I was there and I was just playing with water and clay and was sculpting. <laughs> oh, or, so you started sculpting with clay when you were five. Yeah, and drawing pictures. I okay. was drawing animals and everything. Uh, <laughs> when I was in school, I was <laughs> drawing uh, stars and pop stars for my friends. <laughs> Faces and kind of it was funny. And I used to be sick a lot as a child. I, uh, my health wasn't good. And um, I, I, when I was in the bed, I was just drawing. I had dyslexia. I couldn't read much. As even I loved books, um, um, I couldn't read that much. And uh, um, I was just drawing. <laughs> and in my past times, and as a child, I was. That's what I was doing a lot. Yeah. All right. So you spent. So you were you were sick when you were young. You spent a lot of time in bed. And you spent a lot mm -hmm. of that time drawing, and um, and then I understand. Oh, so what's what's what? What do you have to say next? I don't want to. I don't want to control the the storyline. Mm -hmm. I'd like I'd like you to share uh, it the way you want to share it. Okay. Uh, as I was growing up, um, I uh, I was very passionate about art and nature, and um, it was in communist Czechoslovakia. I couldn't travel. And I, I have a de desire to see uh, all the art we, uh, we were taught in art history classes. Mm. I, I had desire to see Italy and, and places, beautiful places in Europe. Okay. Um, and um, I managed somehow through my connections to my friend uh, to get out on the trip. Uh, to Italy and Austria. It was a group trip of young people. With on, uh, it was a bus, uh, on bus, and um, there was secret police kind of watching us. <laughs> and <clears throat> I managed to escape from this trip. And, um, Wait, can I... Can I, um, I want to I wanna make sure that I'm understanding you correctly. You said that you managed to get to Italy and Austria in a group... Mm -hmm in a group of some kind, and you were being watched by police, and then you managed to escape? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was uh, through travel agency for young people, and oh. uh, it, was, it was just a group of people. We were all on the bus. It was, uh, we were traveling on the bus. Okay. And it was, that's how you could, could possibly travel if you paid a lot of money and had correct connections. Um, 
then uh, I was able to get west, uh, and I never returned back. Um, you never went I, back uh, to Czechoslovakia? Yeah, I, had, I, I sneaked up from the group <laughs> with, awesome. with my friend and went to refugee camp, um, where I spent one year in Austria. Wait, you, you went to what? A camp? Refugee camp, yes. A, a refugee camp? I'm sorry. You, Probably you my there. accent is too. No, that's okay. Hey, that's okay. Uh, you know, that's kind of mm. it's kind of neat. You know, we're different, but we're the same. <laughs> so <laughs> you spent a whole year living in a refugee camp, and that was where in Austria? In Austria, yes. So first in Alps, and then closer to Vienna. Mm. It was actually very beautiful. I was young and crazy. Um, I didn't kind of. When you are young, you don't. You can go through so many things, and you don't worry, and you don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, when you're I young, you great people. Hmm. You can be fearless. Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of adventure. Okay. Yeah. Oh, can and, uh, you tell us how how old were you? How old were you when you did this? When you ran away from home? <laughs> <laughs> I was twenty twenty four years old. Twenty four. Okay, so yeah, mm -hmm. young, confident, fearless. And and now you're on uh, an adventure on your own in the world. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to stay in Europe because of the art and culture, and I love art architecture. And um, I met my ex-husband, and uh, after a while, he he kind of made me to follow him to U.S. Uh, then I came to U.S. in in year 1980, uh, uh, 1987. So in 1987, you mm -hmm. and your your now ex-husband moved to Nebraska in the USA. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, was what was that like? It culture, culture shock. <laughs> it was culture shock. It was like totally different from, mm -hmm. from European art, and history, and all of a sudden you're in cornfields. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I lived in Nebraska for two years, and we were planning um, where to move from there um, after I got green card. Um, then we decided to move to uh, Northwest. Uh, mm. We were traveling on our vacation through Coeur in Idaho, and I said, this is so beautiful, I want to live there. I, All my life, I just love nature. I love trees, I love mountains, I love yeah. water. Mm -hmm. And it was resonating with me so much that um, year after that, we moved to Coeur in Idaho, okay. um, where I lived for 22 years. <laughs> 22 years mm -hmm. in Coeur Lane, Idaho. Mm -hmm. And um, before in Nebraska, I was doing. Uh, I had a job in a, a medical supply factory, and I find a local pa a potter, and I was just playing this clay um, in his studio. Before I left Czech Republic, I I uh, had degree in ceramics. I spent six years in school in Prague, and got my degree in ceramic arts. Okay. And uh, was making ceramics uh, in... You couldn't have a private business in communist Czechoslovakia. And I was doing for some small shop, traditional company. Uh, they made traditional maiolica, like uh, copies of old maiolica, historical pieces. Maiolica? Maiolica? Mm -hmm. Maiolica is... Uh, low fire ceramics uh, and it's heavily painted uh, oh. you can see a lot of it in Spain Italy Portugal all those the colorful tile bu buildings that's maiolica oh so that's low fire like lower temperatures and it's and they paint yeah. it really heavily interesting yeah because uh, at low temperature the all colors stays um, uh, high fire the the colors are burning out <laughs> they, uh huh uh, that's yeah. Then uh, I was trained as a um, maiolica, traditional maiolica maker uh, uh, in shop, and uh, I was passionate about 
art and my ceramics and I wanted to create my own style and my own way, then uh, that was one of the reasons I escaped, uh, besides freedom. <laughs> That's one of the reasons you stayed and here in the States, in Idaho, it was because you wanted to ha have the freedom to work with clay yeah. in your own way, yeah. where you had the freedom to do that? Yeah, this, that, that was basically the reason why, why I escaped communist Czechoslovakia. I, I wanted oh. to live free oh. and, and to be able to make my art uh, without to have my own business not kind of I have hard time with authorities and to be told what I have to do. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> likes to be told what they can and can't do. <laughs> I mean mm -hmm. uh, that's on some level we all have a need to, you know, do things the way we want to do them. <laughs> And like yeah, be, then, uh, be our own boss in life and do what we want to do. <laughs> so and, you escaped, and, you escaped the communism, because you wanted the freedom to express yourself as an artist and 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 even maybe even as an entrepreneur. It sounds like because you can't own your own shop. Yes, yes, and have freedom to travel and and be free. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Yeah, <laughs> travel and be free. So mm -hmm. twenty two years in Cordell Lane, Idaho and you worked as a ceramic artist and um yeah. neat so so you you got to you escaped <laughs> you got to do what you wanted to do yeah yeah it took me um i started my full time business i was since i moved i was always doing it on side um while i was uh, trying to support myself and in year 1992 um with support of my ex-husband, I uh, started to have it as a full-time business, and um, I was uh, applying for uh, art festivals, and I was showing my art through galleries, and I uh -huh. I traveled a lot. You traveled the world. Uh, I, no, I traveled. Oh, you traveled a lot. United, traveled a lot in the United, United States. States. Okay, yes. so now you're so now you're a full-time ceramic artist mm -hmm. and you have your own business and you are doing shows and there's galleries that you're showing your artwork to you're traveling around promoting your unique artwork that you're making yeah celebrating your freedom <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it was it felt so great to travel for days or three uh, or few days to somewhere uh -huh. and see all the country and changing the landscape. I just used to love that. Oh, that I do life. love Yeah. I, I know what you I mean. Know. Yeah, traveling and across the country, many different landscapes then, as you go. Yeah. yeah. And then there was a community of artists. They did the same thing and we were meeting at some, some point. It was like a family to me. And wow. I just, I just uh, loved that lifestyle and uh, I loved creating my ceramics and uh, see how much joy it gave to people. Um, I was oh, featured cool. in Ceramic Magazine uh, uh, that was about six pages of uh, article about me and I was contacted by Smithsonian in 2006, uh, I think it was, or 2005. Okay. Uh, uh, no, 2005, uh, 1995, I, I was a decade. Um, and, uh, they, so uh, can, they I, asked, can I... Can I, um, mm -hmm. I just want to repeat what you just said just to make sure everyone heard it. You had a ceramic magazine interview you and do like a five or six page feature on you and your work. And then, mm -hmm. then the Smithsonian approached you in like 2006-ish. Yeah, the, uh, the, the magazine asked me to write the article. We, we did write... Uh, uh, I, I wrote my story and, and sent them pictures. Oh, so it's kind of like an autobiography? Yeah, they were interested in my story, how I started. And they and my work was kind of unique. Uh, they were interested in, in my... Uh, how it started, actually, I, I saw a really great international ceramic exhibition in Czech Republic. Um, it was in the castle. It was just gorgeous exhibition and uh, I, I, I 
send them information about it um, because I I want them to kind of mention it and um, I don't know why I actually did it because I, I, I like it so much and they were such a great artist I just wanted to, them to know about it and yeah. send them information and pictures uh -huh. and they wrote me back they would like to know about me <laughs> Wow! and asked me to write article <laughs> Oh. Um, yeah. Neat. And so if we go if we go on Google and search your name, uh, we mm -hmm. just we might find an article by a, a ceramics magazine, and mm -hmm. we might we it might find that, huh? It was published in May, I think ninety six. Ninety six. Oh, ninety eight. Ninety six or ninety eight. Oh, okay. <laughs> I I'm sorry, my memory is you know. That's okay. It's it's published out. It was published at some point in the past. <laughs> it's out there somewhere. Yeah. Um, but if and we search your name, we might find that article. Neat. Yeah. Okay. Um. Then um. I was enjoying living in Idaho and making ceramics and living very happy ha life. I was um, getting healthy. I, I used to have. Uh, a very low immune system, and I was using. Uh, uh, using I was having some uh, health problems uh, since my childhood, and I was gradually healing my, my healing myself, just with lifestyle and diet. So and, uh, you're saying, uh, like you you had an illness when you were very young, and this was mm -hmm. um, this was like around your immune system primarily, and so you had a chronic illness because your immune system was challenged. And so yeah, over, I, had, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I was growing up with chronic issues and chronic uh, illness, and uh, I was actually, when I was baby, I was in coma and nearly died, and then when it started, uh, then all my, all my uh, time growing up, and my parents uh, weren't aware about health food and health life, healthy lifestyle, and then it wasn't perfect. And I was always drawn to her herbalism and, and health, and I was always searching how to, uh, on my own, uh, about alternative health and how to get naturally healthy, because mm -hmm. what was going on with me and the uh, way my <clears throat> parents were living, I could see it, uh, that there is a problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you can and, see that the, the lifestyle that your parents were living um, may have been working against you. You're, it wasn't actually helping you heal. And so yeah, you, were, you were always kind of interested in the, the possibility of a healthy lifestyle that included plants that could help you stay healthy, yeah. get healthy and stay healthy. Yeah. My, my, my mom was sugar addict uh, and... Uh, my dad uh, is meat addict, and we were eating lots of meat and uh, not much vegetables, uh, lots of starches. Uh, it was there wasn't any fast food when I was uh, in Czechoslovakia. Then uh, it was all homemade, but it wasn't healthy food. <laughs> mm. There wasn't enough fruit and vegetables I was craving, and uh, then uh, with, uh, when I got to United States. Um, I, I I had all the freedom here and all the access to healthy foods and vegetables and or, organic stuff and I I just uh, healed myself uh, from severe asthma. I used to have uh, pneumonia very often and uh, I used to have endometriosis and very weak immune system that I used to be sick with high fever um, sometimes every month. It was really it used to be really bad. I, wow. I, right now, I don't get flus and colds. Uh, I don't get sick anymore. Uh, I completely Whoa. heal my asthma. I don't have asthma anymore. That um, is a quite a amazing testimony. Yeah, and I was feeling at at my top of my life. I I thought I had really beautiful marriage. I loved my husband. We were building house on 30 acres and my studio. Uh, and um, uh, then um, I, uh, things started to change. I, I went to very painful separation with my husband. Oh. Then September 11 happened and I couldn't 
support myself anymore with my ceramics. Oh. It w people stopped buying art and for a while. <laughs> and it put me um, in a situation I had to look for a job again. Okay. Uh -huh. So um, you went from being on top of the world in a, mm -hmm. a, a great relationship and building your dream home and, as with mm -hmm. a, with a student, and you were healthy and then all of a sudden the relationship fell apart and then 9-11 yeah. happened and after that your business cr collapsed and so now you're finding yeah. yourself single and looking for a way to support yourself and so you took a job. Yeah. And uh, we got separated in year 2000 and I was prior to that I went I was in Europe and while I was hiking there I love hiking I love nature and I was hiking there I got a tick bite and got infected with Lyme disease. Oh um, man, hiking in Europe, you got bit by a tick and got Lyme disease. And this was like I, just in mm, the early 2000s. It was uh, in the year, year 2000 in July. And oh. um, I wasn't aware about much of Lyme disease. I didn't pay attention to it. Um, my d brother is doctor and he gave me, when it came positive from the lab, he gave me antibiotics and I came home and my marriage fell apart. And I wasn't even thinking came of Lyme disease. Uh, I was oh. thinking of survival and yeah. and um, um, I wow. So so when you <laughs> I'm sorry I don't mean to interrupt or throw off your your flow. I just I'm just processing that um, when your marriage fell apart and you lost. And, and you and you your your business crashed. You were also suffering from Lyme disease at that time, and yet you weren't really treating yourself with the Lyme disease because you were so focused on just trying to keep a roof over your head at that time. <laughs> I I I didn't feel much of the symptoms. I was getting weird symptoms. I didn't understand, um, uh -huh. but I thought from my stress, uh, I didn't have severe symptoms yet because I was still eating, having I was having very healthy lifestyle, um, except that all that stress, um, and I, uh, sorry, I look so upset, oh. uh, I was mm, uh, still making ceramics for full time for two years, and after September 11, um, I had to, I wasn't able to survive much longer, and I find a job as a dental technician. Okay, as and a dental technician. Mm -hmm. And I was doing <laughs> still my ceramics as a second job. <laughs> you and, what? Uh, and, uh, I was still making my ceramics as a second job. Um, like a, I, I, I was still ma ma making what I loved. Uh huh. Um, uh -huh. On the side. Um, on the side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I couldn't travel very far anymore because of that. And I at this time I I bought house uh, on my own and um, I wasn't aware. Um, about uh, tower towers, and I, <laughs> I bought my house. Um, and the priority for my house was studio space, and there was great studio space. And I wasn't looking at anything else. And I, uh -huh. I bought my house between three tower towers. You bought your house what? Between three cellular towers. Between uh, three cellular towers, you bought there was these three yeah. cell towers, and you bought that house right in between them. Yeah, one was like one mile, one mile, uh, one block. I mean, away. They were very, very close distance. I could see them all three very close. Oh yeah. And uh, I wasn't aware of this technology, what it can do to you. Uh huh. Then, <clears throat> but it accelerated my Lyme disease. It accelerated, it accelerated the symptoms of the Lyme disease. It made it worse. Yeah. It was, no, in my Lyme disease was dormant, more or less. But when I moved into the house, I started to get gradually ill. Oh, okay. Yeah. And oh, um, um, there's a little bit of, there's, there's, Eva, there's a bit of knocking coming across from your side, like maybe your phone is moving around and knocking or something like that. Are you able to prevent that knocking sound? We'll get a better audio quality. Yeah, I'm sorry about it. I felt sit still. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> uh, okay. 
So um, mm-hmm. once you moved into this house between the cell towers, then your Lyme disease started to progress, and you were getting sicker. I, yeah. And, and this time I met my current husband. Um, okay. And I was so, so grateful. Um, I, uh, yeah. Uh, I was gradually, we were living nice life, happy life, and I was doing ceramics and planning uh, to start working towards um, doing, doing it full time again, uh, enjoying my garden and uh, planting trees and have lots of herbs. And I, I was having a uh, living happy life, but I, I was getting sicker and sicker and I couldn't understand why. Okay, so you started you started gardening and growing plants and your own vegetables, but you were still getting sicker and sicker, and you didn't understand why. Mm-hmm. Um, and 2006, I uh, switched my uh, analog meter um, that measures electricity on the house to smart meter, and after that happened, my health started to get really severe, and I, I, it put me on disability. I had to quit everything I was doing. I, I couldn't, I had had time to walk, I couldn't sleep, uh, I was in so much pain, um, I had so many symptoms, I couldn't understand, I was going to doctors, and they, nobody could help me. Okay, so, I'll, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll just specify that again, in 2006, they switched your electrical meter to what they called a smart meter on the house, yes. and, and then you got really sick after that, right after that. And the doctors yeah. could not help. The doctors could not help you. Mhm. Yeah. My partner's will was next to the wall when smart meter was. Then when I was working in my studio, which I was spending a lot of time there, I was next to it, and um, then and we were sleeping above it. Our bedroom was above it, oh. and uh, I wasn't aware of it. But I, I, I'm when I have problem, I start to research and I start to look for solutions. Uh huh. And, and uh, that's how I find out uh, about solar towers and smart meters. And uh, I wasn't aware I, I was still having Lyme disease. I, I, I didn't have any idea it's because of that. And uh, oh, yeah, doctors yeah. weren't helping me. Doctors uh, were just pushing, pushing drugs on me and g- giving me diagnoses that were results of what was going on in my body. <clears throat> but they didn't have any solution for me. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah. in 2011, at the same time, I mm, I was started to lose uh, my friends uh, and close friends uh, to cancer, and I felt like I'm living cancer epidemic. So, um, and um, I was trying, on top of mm, what I was dealing with, I was trying <clears throat> desperately to help my friends to live oh my gosh so in the middle in the midst of being so ill and confused not understanding why you're sick and trying to heal yourself because the doctors can't help you then your friends start dying of cancer Mm -hmm. left and right and you're trying to help them keep them alive yeah i lost five close friends uh, at this time you Um, lost five close friends Gradually, in 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 a um, few years, kind of this kind of, and this all this put me in uh, uh, <laughs> research, and I was just researching and listening about natural healing. I knew about herbalism a lot from where I grew up already, but I was starting to uh, research and follow the people and doctors they they had solution for people and uh, uh, we decided um, when I got get this ill and I had hard time to walk and sleep and was in really bad shape uh-huh. we decided to sell the house because um, in Idaho the winters are very cold and uh, the, the climate is not it was a little painful for me okay uh, we decided to move to an uh, easier climate place and we somehow decided, uh, my husband got a job in Olympia and we decided to, to move to to uh, West Coast. Um, um, we, <laughs> we did a crazy thing, we bought a big sailboat 
um, my husband is uh, uh, um, was loving sailing and sailboat, and he used to he he grew up on the coast, and it was one of his passions. He used to have sailboats in past, and we bought a big 50 foot sailboat, beautiful uh, at monk um, called pre, uh, called mold, um, and uh, we moved to the sailboat to be away from Wi-Fi and, uh, oh. and, 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 and basically uh, just, I can just rest there and heal. Okay, uh, so it, it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get a, you wanted to get away from all the electromagnetic uh, mm -hmm. stuff from the, the power systems and the um, mm -hmm. cell towers mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. get on a sailboat out in the ocean uh, in a more a healthier environment where it wasn't so cold and you could kind of get away from the grid, get off the grid and just and be in a more natural yeah. environment and heal. On a sailboat, mm -hmm. a 50-foot mm -hmm. yeah. sailboat. Wow. We weren't completely off the grid. We had still we were plugged to electricity on the, on the uh, uh, marina, but we could switch it off anytime uh, when we were sleeping. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, then um, I was healing myself on the sailboat and while I was going through the healing process and was doing really crazy cleanses and crazy stuff, I was open to try anything what makes made sense to me. Uh -huh. um, I was sometimes so ill that uh, my husband wasn't sure if he can find me alive. Um, I was like bedridden for a while. Okay. On the boat, <laughs> and um, um, I in 2000 um, ter around 2013, um, my, m one of my um, practitioners I was going for help was pointing if she was asking me if if I don't have still uh, uh, still she didn't know I I I was infected if I don't have Lyme disease that she has clients that have similar issues and they do have Lyme disease and I was completely in denial but uh, after a while I started to kind of look into it and I met some people they had Lyme disease and I I saw the and the uh, symptoms are very similar and what I'm experiencing is it was making sense and I started to research Lyme disease and I have to heal myself oh wow um, so that, that happened Mm -hmm. Th that's how you, that's how you discovered that maybe I have Lyme disease. Is you met some people who had Lyme disease, and you noticed the similarities. And, mm -hmm. and my practitioner was pointing it out that uh, that uh, what I experiencing looks like Lyme disease. Okay. Um, yeah. Then I basically. Uh, the support of my husband, huge support of my husband. I wouldn't survive without him. <laughs> uh -huh. um, um, we started to just do what we, we, I was looking at the protocols of success. Uh, doctors, they were specialists for Lyme disease and, and things the people I met were doing and got them well. And I started to do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> it was like a boat spa <laughs> we were living on. <laughs> Like a health spa on a on a sailboat. Yeah. <laughs> a little. Yeah, we got ozone machine, uh, ozone generator. We got um, all kinds of gizmos, um, zappers, and and uh, all kinds of herbs, essential oils, oh, um, oh. medicinal mushrooms, which I was already aware of, and I I, I used to ha have, and um, when I um, go in the forest to hike or so I uh, I always was coming with food and medicine um, because uh. it's in, in me I grew up like that um, then uh, we we got abundance of medicinal mushrooms around in here in forest oh, wow. uh, we, got, we got rishi here and turkey tails turkey On, tails only shaga, shaga mushroom doesn't grow in here it needs colder temperature but the, all these, I'm buying shaga, but the rest of the mushrooms I, I collect myself. Wow. Cool. And, uh, and I was doing all the um, 
traditional Chinese herbalism and uh, are uh, um, making medicinal mushroom tea. I, I'm still drinking and making. And um, it was like a roller coaster. It was like two steps, three step forward, one step back. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh-huh. And I had to keep journey to see the progress. It was uh, pre- pretty rough time uh, about four years. Four and, um, years of struggling with mm-hmm. that illness and trying to figure out how to heal yourself and experimenting with everything. Yeah. 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 Being in extreme pain and, and yeah, it was a um, painful journey, but uh, I was starting to see end of the tunnel uh, in um, 2004. Oh. Yeah. And I, I, and I started to see a couple of doctors that confirmed that I do have Lyme disease. Okay. Um, and uh, they so were... So what? A you said you started to see the... Lo- you started to see the light at the end of the tunnel for your Lyme disease, like you were healing yourself. Mm-hmm. How, how did you do that? How did you heal that? Um, was it was it the medicinal go- was it the medicinal mushrooms or like a, what combination? Combination of everything and 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 doing for sometimes I was doing it into with my intuition, doing uh, some herbs and some treatment for a while and then switch and that's what I read and I was reading also and and listening um, um, a lot of stuff about Lyme disease I learned so much um, that I was basically following what other people were doing um, I, I was I had some herbal tinctures herbal uh, yeah um, herbal teas, uh, I was using a lot of turmeric, medicinal mushrooms, zappers, uh, um, I uh, mm. was doing ozone therapy, I was doing heavy detox, um, I was detoxifying myself from heavy metals and uh, toxins from my body, uh, we got ionic food baths, um, it was a combination of many things. Mm. Um, I was doing and um, it was gradually healing me and I, I could start to see that <laughs> wow a long painful journey of learning of experimenting mm-hmm. and, and learning and healing mm-hmm. and when I uh, when I was missing art I was just sketching and drawing on the boat uh, oh, once a yeah. while I, I it's the longest I uh, Time in my life, I didn't touch the clay. Um, when I got uh, started to get feel good enough, and that I could my my joints didn't hurt and nerves didn't hurt that much, I I, I started to go uh, before we moved of the boat um, to public art school. They have open day, and um, I could go there and play with clay. <laughs> oh. And I I started to do that, and I started to feel how much I missed the clay. Uh, but while while I was healing and started to feel better, I also finished certification for my health coaching. Um, because um, after my very close friend died and I was taking care of her before we moved, um, I, and, um, I, I promised that I will do something about it because I believe nobody needs to die today from the cancer there is there are solutions to it wow and, uh, so you became a certified health coach so that mm-hmm. you could help prevent people from suffering and dying from cancer you believe that that I, can be prevented mm-hmm. I was realizing I know so much about alternative healing herbs um, wild foods and healthy cooking I love uh, raw uh, um, I'm cooking a lot of this live food. I do some. I I eat some cooked food, but I love raw, raw food and oh, raw, raw food. cuisine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I love cooking too. I I love uh, healthy cooking. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, I realized this all I learned, and now I cannot keep it for myself. I originally I was learning all that uh, with desire to heal myself since long time ago when I was still sick with all the autoimmune problems uh, and um, I decided that that was the re- uh, reason and 
um, the the being with my dying friend was last drop, and I said I I I I felt I'm sorry I felt a calling that I need to share what I know with people. Got it. And that's why that's why I went uh, and did, um, to get certification for health coaching. Got it. Yeah, yeah you felt called to help people, and so you got certified mm-hmm. as a health coach because you want to take all you've learned and help people who are suffering, help them end their suffering, and help them heal and stay healthy. Yes. Uh, Yes. And um, (laughs) I was, as I was healing, I was missing more and more living on the ground. I was missing my garden. I was missing my studio. I was missing bigger kitchen. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And um, uh, in uh, last year we were able to buy home again now i live in union uh we we moved last year into our new house and um we still have our boat but we are thinking about selling her because we don't have enough time and resources to take care of both <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, okay uh, so i heard you say a, a y- i heard you say last year you moved into your home in union mm-hmm. and you still have the boat but uh you're thinking about selling it okay Yes, um, and on um, around our house, uh, we we have vision to create edible landscape. I'm planting lots of edible plants and herbs, and even uh, wild edible plants. I used to do a few times in Olympia wild walk, where people can go with me and see that what they can eat in the nature. Oh, an herb walk. So you take people on walks through nature and show them what's edible and Mhm. I did it a few times for public and uh I, I do it all my life for myself. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Uh then um I'm I'm we are trying to create a kind of uh edible landscape. Mm-hmm. My hu- husband would like to have honeybees. Cool. I would like to have a lot of flowers and mm-hmm. and have blooming plants for honeybees. And we got uh, this neglected property completely covered by blackberries, and we are gradually <laughs> uh, <laughs> transforming it with to our vision. <laughs> neat, neat. And uh, neat. and we do have detached garage and started to build my studio, ceramic studio. And um, I would like to combine somehow my health coaching in future with uh, making ceramics and even probably painting because I enjoy also drawing and painting. And um, I would like to combine it somehow in the future. (laughs) That's really interesting. uh, That makes makes sense to me that you'd want to take your two great passions and do them both at the same time. And I imagine Mm -hmm. that the working with clay and drawing could be... um, could be very healthy therapy for someone who's ill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had interesting experience. Um, last, our last camping trip, we go to camp to Shasta with a group of um, uh, people, and it's kind of sometimes even international group. And this year there was a lime, uh, blind person, and I wasn't able to make my olika, which is heavily painted. And um, I was where I was making um, lately was playing a little bit with clay in that art school. I I had only access to one one uh, clay and couple of glazes. Then I was playing with texture, and it inspired me how much uh, the blind person could enjoy my cup, mm. drinking from my cup. Then um, I'm I will create completely new new uh, way making my art. I might do a little bit of myolica just for my own soul. Uh-huh. And I would like to do uh, affordable um, cups and this texture made, made from porcelain and maybe put some words in it. Put I don't know wo- if you heard. Some wood? 
words on on the cup like love, uh, gratitude. Oh, words. You know, if words. You, yeah, love, if, gratitude. If did, yeah. If you did hear hear about Dr. Emoto? Yeah, I have heard about the. Um, he puts yeah. words on the side of glasses and then freezes the water and looks uh -huh. at the crystals on a microscope. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I I do it with my drinking water drinking bottle. Uh, we we drink only spring water. Uh, we are so lucky we got a really good spring in the uh, Olympia, and uh, I get all those words on my on my drinking bo bottle. Oh neat. Then I would like to create ceramics. With, um, will be there will be healing cups. They would <laughs> yeah help to heal people. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, that's the idea I have, and I, I, I have in my um, head to make maybe beautiful birdhouses because I, I have so much joy to watch the nature and birds uh, around me. We have like um, it, our place is like a bird sanctuary. It's we we have creek on our property, and there is wetland below it, and we have so many beautiful birds and animals. And I'm enjoying it so much, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like creating something for gardens, which Mayolika won't be able to. Uh, Mayolika cannot be outdoor where um, there is um, frost. It's a low oh. fire temperature cl clay. Yeah. Then uh, I'm getting all kinds of ideas, and I'm getting so much inspiration. And yeah, that's where I'm now. I'm now, kind of. Great. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe I, I like to I like to mention I was still even I believed uh, I healed myself from my Lyme disease with a little bit of help of two doctors on, on, at the end. Uh, I uh, I was still having problems because Lyme disease that um, having it for so long does damage to the body and damage my joints. They and damage it some. Some damage and but yeah, and I couldn't hike. Uh, I, I wasn't able to hike anymore uh, because uh, of the bad knees and joints, other joints even in my foot. And I just ran into technology lately that is healing rest of it and healing it very fast. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, it's a yeah, yeah. So you've discovered some new technology that is helping mm -hmm. you heal even faster. Yeah. The yes, mm -hmm. it's helping healing uh, the damage. It's a stem cell. Uh, um, it stimulates the technology stimulates stem cells production, oh. and it basically heals in the body what it needs to be healed, what needs to be strengthened and healed. And uh, that uh, that's my li la last stage of healing from Lyme disease, basically. Okay. And uh, I can I can walk normally now and hike. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so I'm going to repeat what, what I heard you say, just in case anybody had a hard time understanding. So having Lyme disease for so long left you with chronic problems. Some, it did some damage. Yes. And so you couldn't hike. You couldn't, you couldn't walk up into the hills and do your herb walks and stuff because your joints and stuff. Yep. So you've discovered yeah. <clears throat> some stem cell activating technology Mm -hmm. And that is helping you to heal your last stages of those yeah, chronic, those the chronic da problems. damage, mm -hmm, damage. That, that, uh, <clears throat> excuse mm -hmm. me. And that, so now you can you can go on hikes again. So you've you've healed yeah. yourself again and again and again. <laughs> yeah, I always looking for solution. I love this planet. I I love Mother Earth, and I I always looking for positive. So I I believe there is solution to every problem. Uh -huh. uh, and it it could be so simple, and it's in the nature. It's it's, it's around us. Um, we get so disconnected with nature. Uh -huh. um, we get disconnected with who we are. Um, that um, uh, we that's and that causes sickness too. That could um, that the, and uh, illness is connected to our mindset and our uh, our psychology and our traumas. Also, it's not just the diet and uh, what it, we drink, it's all connected. There is everything. Mm -hmm. Everything is connected. <laughs> so you're bringing this full circle because I remember in the beginning of our conversation you were saying 
that your the beauty of the world, your appreciation for beautiful things, you know, nature, plants, and beauty, that's all a part of your health. Yes. Hmm, that's neat. So it's it's natural for a human being to look at a sunset, or like a, you know, a really breathtaking sunset, and then and then find themselves in a state of awe. But if we're so yeah. bu- if we're too busy um, living a different sort of lifestyle where we, we don't take the time to do that, if we don't take the time to yeah. observe the beauty that's all around us, then that in itself yeah. is disconnecting us from our nature, which keeps us healthy. Yeah, and it literally d- does disconnect us because after we started to wear shoes, we used to be connected to the earth elect- electrically. Uh, 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 earth, earth provides the electrons like um, those are natural antioxidants for our body we used to take in and it pro- the, these antioxidants also protects people from all the negative energy like EMF energy um, I sleep grounded and I have grounded, grounding technology um, by my computer I, I got all kinds of uh, organ technology and pyramid technology. Wow. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And, um, wow. Uh, okay, so, Eva, um, you're like an encyclopedia of um, therapeutics and, and, he- and healing strategies. So if someone out there wants to get in touch with you, if mm-hmm. they if they feel inspired by this interview and they they want to communicate with you, how can they reach out to you? How can they get in touch? I have my website. It's uh, ivatalako.com. Okay. Um, like m- my my name I V A T A L. I'm sorry. T A L. I'm I'm nervous and I cannot spell my name. <laughs> okay, that's okay. <laughs> I've been there. T K O. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'm. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So it is Iva Telaco is spelled I V. I'm sorry, Eva. You pronounce it Eva, but it's actually spelled I V A T A L A C K O. Mm-hmm. Eva Telaco dot com. So people can <laughs> yes. they can contact you mm-hmm. that way. Great. Yeah. So um, I always like to ask people at the end of these interviews, um, what do you have a request for our community that would be really helpful and meet needs for you? It sounds like like um, like there's some things that you're really amped about. You've got some energy uh, in in regards to wanting to help heal people and prevent illness you also got some energy towards wanting to incorporate the clay and the, and um, artwork in the healing and then you also want to incorporate this edible landscape around your property and sort of make like this just healthy environment and a place where people can um, do healthy stuff is there anything mm-hmm. that would you know what? What would really help you to manifest your dreams? What What is it that that um, What would be a request if if people could make some contribution of some kind? Is it that, you know what would What would you like? What What would you like to have have as a result of this interview? Like for people to hear it and um, contact you. Hmm. What is it What is it that you would like? I haven't thought about that. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm happy where I am. Um, um, I uh, I don't see too many people. I don't have uh, full clientele. Uh, I help I help people. I helped some people, and they had very good results. But I um, I don't know. I want people to realize that there is God in everybody, and we have there is solution in nature for everybody. Uh, uh, and we our earth. We are part of our earth. And we need to protect her, uh, and because if if our environment and if uh, things died, uh, we died with it. <laughs> yeah. Could shook us up, please. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah. so yeah, you you um you're saying we we rely on our earth 
and we rely on our connection to the beauty of nature mm-hmm. for our health, for our survival and our health. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so that's the world you want to live in. That's the, those. That's what you want to talk about yeah. and, and practice and experience. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. Our, mm-hmm, our environment became so toxic. They are, we are bombarded so, by so many toxins. If people decide not to choose, they, we have free choice uh, not to be part of it mm-hmm. and, and mm. look for solutions. I mm. see. Yes, our environment, just society has evolved in such a way that we are now being bombarded with toxins and all sorts of things that can throw off our health. And you're saying we have the choice. We have free will. It's up to us to make to choose if we want to allow that to continue and allow ourselves to be mm-hmm. bom- bombarded with toxins or if we want to learn how to live a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, and everybody has talent. Everybody has purpose here and uh, sometimes people get ill if they just don't follow what they were why they are here when they are not doing what um, when they are not following their purpose oh. and, um, if they are so disconnected with who they are and yeah <laughs> oh I see yeah. people can lo- look at more kind of who everybody is piece of God. <laughs> everybody is piece of earth. Uh-huh. And everybody has power and everybody has talent, some talent. Right? And everybody is, is precious. Great to- yeah. Yeah. Everybody is precious and yeah, we're all a piece of this earth, of this um well, this phenomenon of existence. We're mm-hmm. all a part, we're all a mm-hmm. part of that, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Neat. Well, thank you, Eva Talako. Thank you for sharing your whole story of where you came from and how you <laughs> ended up out here in the West Puget region. And um, it sounds like you have been on a journey of healing and also of self-expression and, and being you, doing your nature, which is art and creating things with your hands and... Um, and sort of closing the gap between yourself and nature, realizing that you are nature, that it's all you too. It's all, it's all you're a part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. It was yeah, nice your, re- to you. your reality. Yeah, it, was, I, it was nice to listen. Thank you. And I love 4,000. I was there last week and I go there pretty often. <laughs> oh, great. It's, it's, such a beautiful place. <laughs> yeah, it's a really neat town. Yeah, and the people who mm-hmm. live here are really grateful to live here. Um, yeah. yeah, if you're ever up this way, uh, if you want to grab a coffee or something, um, give me a buzz and see if I'm available. It would be neat to actually meet you in person sometime. <laughs> okay. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Well, thank you, okay. Eva. Thank you so mm-hmm. much for, again, and um, until next time, my friend. Okay, goodbye, and have a beautiful day. You too. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the West Puget Community Connection podcast. Be sure to catch the next episode. Sign up for our email list at westpugetcommunityconnection.com and you'll be notified when new episodes are published. And if you're interested in advertising or being featured on the show, you can contact us through our website as well. West Puget Community Connection.com. The West Puget Community Connection podcast is brought to you in part by MyWebDesignServices.com. Quick, easy, affordable websites that look amazing across all devices. For a quote or to get started today, visit MyWebDesignServices.com. The West Puget Community Connection podcast. This is where we learn about the people of our community. We learn what they do, and more importantly, why they do it. Subscribe by email at westpugetcommunityconnection.com. We look forward to learning more about you.